Now, where's the ideal point to touch? Now, we can talk about that, right? Zach, I'm JM. Zach, welcome. Nice to meet you. Hold it right here. Take it up and down a few times. And let's look at how far that has to go. Maximum legal grip. Take it up and down a few times. See what we're doing here? It's obvious, right? To facilitate getting the bar in a diagonal instead of a straight across, which cocks the wrist back, the diagonal lets me put my bone here underneath and it goes into the heel of this hand. So to do that, you make a diamond with your hands, place it on the bar and slide out to maximum legal grip. And now I'm in the right place. The second thing I'll have to do is I'll have to rotate my knuckles a little bit. This is what's holding everything up. So if we rotate like a motorcycle grip and we rotate the bar a little bit, knuckles up, now we have the bar and there's something underneath it. How do your wrist feel now? A lot better. You can do something small to make that much of a difference. It makes a huge difference. Let's go on to your, your stroke. Okay. Just do that until you get the habit. Okay. Yeah, you, you can stop doing it. I didn't do that very often. That's all right. All right, take it out. All right, now take your stroke for me. Okay, you can rack it. So here's his touch point, and here's where he ended. These should be straight. Gravity only pulls straight down. This bar is not fighting you this way. Any strength that you use this way is strength you could have used this way. The bar pass should be as ramrod straight as you can make it. Now, the shoulders are up here and the touch point is down here. So there's a difference, right? Mm -hmm. So most people press up and back, right? But what if you could get enough of an arch so that your shoulders came underneath that touch point? So let's try it. All right. Let's get the best arch you can. Okay. The best arch you can. And we'll see if it's different. Now get the best arch you can. I mean the best. Lift up for me. There we go. That's better, isn't it? That's better, isn't it? And you can have somebody put you in. Now you can't get this out of the bar yourself. I'll get it. Or hack yourself. Say one, two, three. One, two, three. All right. Now, let's see where that touch point is. Okay. And then straight up. Take it, put, uh, just throw it somewhere. All right, so this is a lot shorter than what we had. Yeah. Rest, sit up. That's hard on your back. So bar path, any side to side, anything that isn't up and down against gravity is not gonna help you. So if you have 600 pounds pushing down, and you push up with 600 pounds. What happens to the bar? It's a math question. 600 down, 600 up. Nothing. No, never. Nothing happens. Yeah. That's equal, right? Yep. So for starters, whatever you load the bar to, you better be thinking, I got to push harder than that or it won't move. If you push up with 400 pounds and you have 400 pounds on the bar, what happens? Nothing. Nothing. If you have 45 pounds, on the bar and you push up on the bar with 45 pounds, what happens? Same thing. What happens if you have 100 pounds on the bar and you push up with 500 pounds? It's going up quickly. It zips up. If you want to move the bar faster, you're going to use up your force. You're trading force, speed for weight. Okay. All right. So two things. One, we want to push straight up. What happens if, what happens if I push it just a little bit of an angle. So I got 600 pounds on the bar and I'm going to push up with 650, but I'm going to push it like this. So right. how much of it is going up and how much of it, not all of not it, all right? Of it. And the further you get off this line, let's say you have 620 pounds at your disposal. That's the force you can produce, right? And you got 600 pounds on the bar. So you could put that 620 directly up and move it fairly quickly, or you could put that 620 at this slightly sideways nonsense 
and just barely squeaked the 600 up. I got what you mean now. So you have, you, you've trained your muscles and your cerebral uh, neuromuscular system to produce X amount of force. And you show up at the meet with that ability. So let's say the ability is for you to, to bench 550. That's what you've built. That's the amount of force you can make in a single rep. So what can you load the bar to? 500, 510, maybe 520. But even if you push straight up and down, there's other places that you can lose some of that 550 strength, that power that you can produce. Mm -hmm. If you have 550 pounds of force, we'll say 500 for math's sake. If you can produce 500 pounds of force and you push on this bar at a 45 degree angle, how much of it goes into lifting the bar and how much of it goes this way? Probably Half. 250, yeah. Half of it does. So that's 250 you can lift that way. And the, and the more you bring those in line. So here's 250, here's 300, 350, right? And if you go right underneath it, maybe 490. But not 500 because that won't move anything, right? What you'll feel like, what you should feel like as you're training is that you're trying to create a decline press. That's where the leverage is. And that's gonna be straighter. You, you may not ever get your, your touch point and your shoulders underneath each other. I've seen some athletes, some females and some lighter guys that can do it. Bigger guys have a tougher time, but you want to try. You want to try to get as straight a bar path as you can. Because anything that's moving it this way is taking some of those pounds away from you. Now, where's the ideal point to touch? Now, we can talk about that, right? As low as possible. Yeah. Okay? But that, that is going to be determined by your arch. Let's go with that question since it came up. So lay flat on the bench. Pretend you have the bar. Or you could take the bar. Doesn't matter. So why don't you go ahead and take the bar. Flat on the bench. And if we put a little chalk on here. Uh, do we have some chalk? We do. It's, uh, Give me a little chalk. chalk right I'm going to paint the, the bar right across the, the bottom there. All right, take it out, Zach. Don't spin the bar because the, the little chalk dust will fall in your eyes. All right, take it down, touch, straight back up. All right, now, put the bar back. Then we have one line here. Now, you should be able to go below this line the more you bring your shoulders under your rib cage, right? Because mm -hmm. your shoulders are going to come this way. So get your best arch, and let's see if you can move that to a lower touch point. You should be able to. All right, let's see. Right, now go as low as you can, elbows in. That's it. Don't press up and back. Press straight up. Let's, go, let's just show them that, though, before you do another rep. Hop up and show the camera that by arching, we went from, this is flat bench, and by arching, we were able to touch down there. The better that arch becomes, the more flexible you become back here. And remember, I said that's in the like, T12, T11, those, those last couple ribs. Mm -hmm. If you get that going you can touch lower and lower and lower. So as you become more flexible, your touch point should be lower and lower and lower. But it should be as low as you can get it for, for that decline leverage. So if you ask anybody in the gym, it'd be rare for anybody to answer this question differently. How much can you bench more on an incline, flat, or decline? You just said decline. Yeah, I don't know anybody yeah. that doesn't say decline. Why is that? Well, one reason is because you don't, because you touch higher, right? Yeah. On the incline, you touch all this way. And so one reason is better arch. Second reason is leverage, right? right. And you don't push as far. So what you want to do is you want to turn your flat bench into a decline press, if you can, as much as you can, right? And how are you going to do that? Better arch. Better arch. And we didn't talk, you have a decent arch, you have a good arch actually. So, but there's ways to, to, to get better at that. And this is a good drill to do. I do this a lot to try to build consistency with people. Um, I'll put a, a mark on the bar and I'll say do three reps. 
and it will get up. And if there's three different lines, they weren't very consistent. Mm -hmm. And you do six or 10 reps and there's one line, you, you know where you're going. Now, why do I want consistency? Well, if you do something different every time, it's hard for me to fix. But if you do the same thing wrong every time, I can work with that. So becoming consistent in what you do, if you have a coach, becoming consistent in what you do, they'll fix the problem. They'll, they'll, they'll steer you towards better leverage. Um, you know, being consistent if nobody's watching you, you might be building a bad habit. But if you have somebody helping and you know what you're supposed to be trying to do, uh, that's a good, that's a good uh, drill. And it's a good teaching method, too, to, to find the lower position. Uh, do you bench in a shirt at all? No. Never okay. Have. Well, if you bench in a shirt, you, you, you want to get that, that bar as far away from you until it's just about to fall. It's just, you're just about to lose it. And sometimes people do, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah, you want it as low as you can. But still, for leverage, we do too. So why don't you, why don't you hop in, get, it, get the best arch you can, now I'm going to help you. Back up, back up. That's where I want you there. There we go. Now, I'll pull this out for you. Is that underneath there? That, that, yes. uh, okay. Just say one, two, three. One, two, three. All right, now get that, elbows tucked in. Twist those elbows, twist them. Now, how low can you get that bar? That's even lower with that. All right, hop, I'll throw that back there and show. Uh, you, uh, you really cut your distance here. I don't know how high, how far we lifted that, but he, that third line is the difference between lying flat, a pretty good arch, and the best arch we could get. And did you feel the leverage? You might not have felt it with this bar, okay? But if you do this same thing in your gym with 145, same thing you will feel that decline leverage and you'll, you'll bench more because everybody declines more than they flat bench. Right. Yeah. So we're talking about a question about how to increase the arch because it's so valuable to have a good arch. All you have to do is get like a, a piece of... I'm J.M. Blakely. Thanks for watching. I want to announce some personal training that I'll be doing on the internet. You can message me through Instagram and also look for more of my content at my YouTube channel, JM Seventh Level. The links are below. Not a good arch. Push up and back. Up and back? Yep. Now, this is straight up, but look, that's the actual distance through that the bar took. Let me bring it straight then. Yeah. See the difference? And that's just. So if you push up and back, you're traveling. They measure two knees. I don't care, like you said, what do I got out here to push with? You see what I'm saying? This right. is over, see my center of gravity is here, right? Uh -huh. If it's back here, what the f That's all on my delts. Right.